the Night Witches, the all-female squadron during World War II. The women of the 588th Night Bomber Regiment of the Soviet Air Forces better known as the Night Witches, had no radar, no machine guns, no radios, and no parachutes. All they had on board was a map, a compass, rulers, stopwatches, flashlights, and pencils. Yet they successfully completed 30,000 bombing raids and dropped more than 23,000 tons of munitions on the advancing German armies over the course of four years during World War II. The all-female Night Witch Squadron was the direct result of women in the Soviet Union wanting to be actively involved in the war effort. Many Soviet women had grown weary of playing a support role during the war and wanted to be engaged in combat on the front lines. From the very inception of the war, Colonel Marina Raskova, a pilot who was known as the Soviet Amelia Earhart, began receiving letters from women who wanted to be involved. Raskova took their pleas seriously and petitioned Joseph Stalin to be able to organize a regiment of female pilots to fight against the Germans. She also lobbied for the Soviet women to be eligible for the draft. And in October of 1941, Stalin granted her request and ordered the establishment of three all-female air squads. He stood at the forefront of historical progress as the Soviet Union became the very first country to allow women to fly combat missions. Ultimately, the only air squad that belonged exclusively to the Dominion of Women was the 588th Night Bomber Regiment, the Night Witches, where every single individual from the pilots to the commander to the mechanics was in fact female. Thus, in 1942, the assemblage of the regiment began to proceed in Ingalls, a small town near Stalingrad. The approximately 400 women that enlisted ranged from the ages of 17 to 26. These future combat pilots were greeted by Marina Raskova, who emphasized the gravity and seriousness of their enlistment. The young women were given uniforms that was far too large for them, as they were meant for men. Some of the women even tore apart their bedding to stuff into their boots to keep them from slipping off. Moreover, they were provided with outdated equipment and their planes were actually crop dusters and never actually intended for combat. The plane was literally made out of plywood with canvas pulled over it. It offered no protection from the elements and at night the pilots had to grit their teeth and endure sub-zero temperatures, freezing winds, and the risk of frostbite. Stay tuned for part two. If it's more interesting, you can find it here.